Hello, everyone. Paul Tranny here, just uh, diving into today's Photoshop Masterclass. So good to have you here. Yes, that's what's happening. We got a Photoshop Masterclass. That's what's going on, and that is why you're here. So good to see you. Um, let's dive into this. Ashi, Aaron, Anna Brackett, Jennifer Poole, um, uh, Tunk, we're, you're seeing us more than your family. Well, hmm. same, same, you're exactly right. <laughs> uh, I think Kathleen knows why I'm laughing. Anyway, let's go ahead and go dive into our Photoshop Masterclass. Hopefully you're joining me on Behance. If you're over on YouTube, head over to Behance where I'm live and you can see below me, we're gonna create some natural and abstract elements. And I like the idea of creating content just purely from uh, uh, you know, file new, new document, not using photos. Typically we use photos to make things. This is all sort of, uh, a lot of it's just generated in Photoshop. So I think it will be fun. Um, uh, <laughs> Carol, I am all bundled up. We had snow here yesterday. Um, yeah, or last night actually. So I got a couple inches of snow here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. I gotta go shovel after this, so that's my plan. Um, I'm so happy you're here, Kath uh, Catherine Martin. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's right. We have two Cat Martins in the house. All right, let me go ahead and switch screens. Kind of see what we're, what I'm thinking of when I when I say sort of generated content, right? A lot of this is just generated directly from Photoshop. Okay, so this is like the, you know, if you don't have any resources, here's how you can make some resources, right? Again, just a couple examples. You can see one here, uh, another one I'm kind of working on here with some hand uh, work there. I have. Uh, let's move this over. Here's another one. If we wanted to get. Uh, take at least one photo from our camera roll and uh, make something like, um, I don't know, it's just, uh, it's like some modern rock uh, love ballad playlist cover or something is what these are. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> Makes me laugh. <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, so that's what we're gonna make. We'll make all of this from scratch. I think it's gonna be fun. Of course it's gonna be fun. Cause you're here, I'm here. This is Photoshop Masterclass. And we're starting from basically a blank document, right? So that's what we can do. Um, we could do the the hearts, we could do the trees. The trees are actually pretty easy as well. Uh, let's actually jump in. Let's just do trees really fast, right? So right in here, this is what I wanna do. Just generate, generate a tree. This is what I'm mainly talking about. I'm on a, a blank layer, nothing selected. Go to filter, down to render, and you'll see right in here. Sorry, everything's so small. Uh, right in here, flames, picture frames, tree, clouds, fibers, a number of other things that we can add as well. So tree is what I wanna select right? And I did, I previewed this a little bit earlier this week in case you're wondering, but now I have more uh, time to go through this. So let's just set this to the default, by the way, just so mine looks like what yours will look like. Right here, we have this oak tree is what's selected initially. I can drag that over and what we're doing is we're changing the lighting direction. It's kind of more above. We'll see it kind of cross uh, and it goes from left to right. So it goes from, uh, yeah, left to right when it comes to the lighting direction. We can make left, less leaves, we can change the leaf size, right? You have sort of full control when it comes to uh, working, working with these uh, branches as well. So the branch height, right, isn't how we'll say long they are, but it's how high they end up on the tree trunk is what that means, right? But we can jump in, we can generate this one, we can click okay, what's gonna happen? It's gonna make that tree. Really straightforward, right? There's more fun things we need to do with this, right? So please hang out with me, because this is like okay. This is like, hey, I need a quick tree, I need a quick, I don't know, any one of these, a pine tree for instance, we can jump in, generate that really fast. Again, just creating a couple trees, filter. I'm gonna go beyond this, because this is, this is pretty straightforward. I wouldn't even call this masterclass type content. Maybe it is. We can get into some of these more interesting ones. I think what I, I, the ones I usually use is a young Robina, right? Because that just gives me like, I just think it's a beautiful tree. I can see through it a little bit more. So that's gonna help out a lot. Um, and then also we have down here, we have a foliage plant as well. So that's something I might consider using as well. But that's what I typically do, generate some content, done, right? Uh, 
Uh, okay. Man, uh, sorry to hear that, Mia. This is definitely an educational platform, I would say, right? We're not asking for money or anything. We're just like, hey, you know what? This is your creative outlet. We're all kind of stuck inside. So this is pretty cool, right? I can go ahead and take this. Uh, I want to kind of put this tree inside of that rectangle like that. We'll move that over, do something like that. Uh, but I want to do something more interesting. So uh, if you actually create a path, so here's a path I can make, right? So I'm just going to go in and select the curvature pen tool. Okay, curvature pen tool. I want to make sure this is set to path and not shape. Make sure it's a path. And then I can click, 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 click. You get the idea, okay? So there's my path. It's this working path over here in my paths panel, right? Typically I'll save it just by double clicking on it and we'll call this wavy. There's my wavy path. We'll go to filter. We'll go to render that tree along that path. And sure enough, that's what we get. Did this with the foliage branch. I'm gonna go to young Robina cause that's the one I like the most increase, decrease the branch height just so it spreads uh, across the whole trunk more more closely. Click up. Can do in Photoshop, right? Uh, I'm gonna get right into the nitty gritty of this, right? So I'm gonna turn that off, create a new layer, uh, and take a look at uh, shapes. So here's an R, and I can talk to you about how I made this, right? If you're interested, right? Here's an R. and hopefully everybody can see me around text if we want to. Okay, so uh, what you can do is you can jump in, use the text tool, and I'll turn that off just so you don't need to worry about seeing it. T-R-E-E, -E. let's make this all caps. Like that, there we are, here's my text. Like so, boom, boom, and we can select this text by holding down the command key, clicking on that text in the panel. I can turn this into a working path. This is make a work path from a selection. Bam, there it is, okay? So I made actually four different paths. Here's what's gonna happen, by the way. Uh, uh, oh man, I'm so sorry it's lagging. Yeah, I apologize. But such is life. Let me turn this off. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so here is my work path. There's an issue with this, by the way. So I'm going to duplicate duplicate this work path real fast. Maybe I'm going to. Um, but I'll go ahead and go to filter. I'll go to uh, render down to tree. It's not gonna do all of the letters, just so you know. It's just gonna do the last letter, that S. Okay. Okay, good. Just decrease the quality, uh, if you could, of your, thank you for that, Kathleen. It just does the S. That's why, I click okay, there, it does the S. That's why I've actually broken it out layer, getting rid of that. But now you know why I have each one of these on its own layer. It's its own path in, in Photoshop. So selecting that path, we'll go to filter. We'll play with this first one. This is gonna come together very quickly. I really like how this looks, right? So that R kind of wrapping around. And keep in mind, I took the branch height all the way down. If I crank it up, and this goes for all the trees, it's gonna make for a very high trunk and isn't as interesting for me. So I'm gonna do kind of like right there, something like that. Okay, with that being done, I'll click okay. Bam, there it is, right? Let's do that a couple more times, selecting the E. This time I'm just gonna use a shortcut key because I'm fancy like that, right? Filter, using that last effect, it's control command F, right? So again, new letter, new path, Boom, done. Go with the S, use that same tree. And of course I can use different trees as well, right? Easy enough. Does that make sense? Ah. All right, I'm glad everybody's internet's 
Doing great. Storms make trees. Here's another thing we do with trees as well. Uh, we could actually take a tree. And I already did this a couple weeks ago. That's why I'm going to just show this really fast. Um, I could do the same thing with roots. So with this word, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go into render tree. I will select a uh, Fraxinus graffiti tree with no leaves, no nothing. Click OK. And again, what I've done here is made this R, which now looks like roots. Cool. Move that over there. Just a creative use of branches. Okay, I did this a couple weeks ago. That's why I'm gonna rush through this. Here's the final, by the way. You guessed it. Done that same way. Trees are fine. Roots are actually trees. Just turned upside down with no leaves. Cool. Can you go in and edit these effects? No, Robert Sullivan. I would love to. Um, if you want to edit the effects, it would honestly. You can do it in Illustrator. You can make your own brush and apply that brush along a path and then change that that uh, brush all done in Illustrator. So uh, join me next week because I'm going to talk about brushes and, and stuff like that uh, on Adobe Live. So uh, yeah, it's deep. What a deep, how profound, right? You get the idea. Okay, I did trees. We got that done in 10 minutes. What? Yeah, 10 minutes. I'll come back to this later, okay? Because I want to kind of dive into, uh, you know, playing playing with it a little bit more creatively. And I'm not even saying this is any good, but just uh, playing with it uh, in a more unique fashion. Uh, but let's take a look at what we can do with fire, right? Fire works a little bit different. We go to filter, we'll go to render, we'll go to flame. If I select flame initially, it's like, hey, you know what? You have to use uh, a path, mister. So you do with flames, you have to have a path selected. Here's a quick one that you can do is you can go in and use the custom shape tool, right? Right behind the rectangle tool. Go to that custom shape tool, open that up. You can go into all the legacy and 2019 shapes and all that fun stuff and grab something in here. So these are all vector objects. These are basically paths that I get to use, right? In this case, I'll just grab a heart right here. Boom, selecting that heart. Making sure this is set to path is what I would do. I would make this a path, draw out a heart. There's my work path. Guess what? I already made it a second ago. But uh, double click, we'll call this new heart. Here's my new heart. All ready to go, right? There it is. Cool. We could always edit this. I would probably change this a little bit. Uh, but not to worry, we're going to do this actually a couple times. In fact, let's just, for one, let's move it down. Let's move it down a little bit in the center. That selected, filter, render, flame. I'll show you the different types of flames we're going to get, right, and how this goes. This one happens to be my favorite, by the way, uh, which is multiple flames along a path. But let's just reset this back to default. So this is what you would get. Select default. Oh yeah, this man, this guy's been through some heartbreak, yeah. You know, a heart on flames, what? A heart of flames is so profound, man. Right, changing the length, you can see what it's gonna do, obviously. It's like we're stoking the fire at that point. We can make them wider so it'll stretch them out more and we'll see that change as well. See what it's doing there? It's like, oh man, the torment this person's dealing with is too much. We wanna give it a little bit of a breeze right? We can change that direction. And by the way, if I take down the width, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. So the angle, right? And then the intervals as well. So this is um, how thin or thick it is. So uh, you have a lot of control with this, right? So we could do something like this. Uh, by the way, I can play, play with those settings. Again, I can go to uh, this is the default multiple flames, one direction straight up and down. Uh, like I mentioned, I like multiple flames along a path, right? To have that path and have that flame follow that path. I think this is really cool. Okay. Wait for it. You can have it path directed. So as 
it'll always be going a certain direction. So if the path is angled one way, that's the direction the flame will be. That's why it's like staggered all these different ways. Uh, so cool. <laughs> oh, Kathleen, that's funny. Multiple flames, various angles. You get the idea. Okay, we get it. Let's go ahead and use this in a real world use case. Multiple flames below. Actually, I don't. We'll just do this first one. We'll do one. We're going to do this a couple times. Here we are. Here's the default. Done. Click OK. Bam. Call it a day. Right? Not really. There's so much more we need to do. But that's what we have. Okay? There we go. So it's on its own layer. I can play with this all I want. Um, I could start to change the color. You know how it works. It's Photoshop after all. Uh, this is what I want to do. I want to go into this path and I'm thinking, you know what? Just think of this as a uh, good old illustrator as well because we have a lot of the um, uh, ability to edit this path as well. So right in here, we can say, hey, you know what? Let's add an anchor point. Let's add our point like right down there, boom. Let's uh, take our direct selection. Let's remove that point that I just created. But basically I'm just gonna make this out. The starting point has to be like, make that longer, but just having something a little bit more organic than something that's straightforward, okay? So again, I'm playing with the new heart is what I'm working with. Have that path selected. We'll go in here, we'll go into uh, render flame. Wait for it. Yeah, man, it's gonna be the, the ballads. All the ballot. All right, there we have it. Uh, can you move a path and layer together? I would love to be able to edit this path and the flame also edits, but they're no longer connected, which is admittedly a bummer. But you're wondering, you're like, oh, I want to manipulate this more. Uh, you could do that a couple different ways. Um, I would actually use, I'd go into transform and I'd use the um, sort of updated or enhanced warp feature. So warping this, and in this case, I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna click like right here, right? And I've added that bezier point, right? And I could take this, take this larger, adjust that bezier point, right? Stretching this out, kind of like that, making that look thicker. On this side, same thing, option key, click right there, and we'll pinch these in if I can. Oh, oops, I do that all the time. Let's add another one down here. But that this line, what I just did, is this line stabilizes it. So sometimes I'll add a point saying, hey, you know what? Don't move anything to the right of this line. That gives me the ability to control this, right? and adjust this like so. Um, I gotta be able to break this. Shouldn't I have ability to break this line? I don't know. Wait for it. Convert point, to, oh, no, that's not gonna work either. Let's go back in there. Redo warp. Warping this. So I applied that warp already. I could now work on a new warp, but let's do this really fast. I'm gonna take this flame, I'm gonna convert it to a smart object, right? We'll go into edit, transform, warping this again, right? Holding on the option key, clicking, stabilizer line, clicking next to it, boom. This is the line I wanna control, manipulating this the way I want. Um, I'm gonna add another point right here. Bring that in like that. Again, I'm just making it look thinner on this end. Okay, like that. All right, holding on the Option key or the Alt key, clicking down here, making that even smaller if I want to. Uh, maybe playing with that curve, uh, you get the idea. Okay, I'm gonna go back into Transform really fast, Warp. So this is what I was just about to show you. So the reason I put this in a smart object right over here is so when I go back into transform and warp it some more, it actually remembers all the lines and everything, which is fantastic, right? It remembers all the Bezier points so I can go in and control this again and tweak what I already have in here, uh, as you can tell, right?
Cool. Have that flame. That one's done. Probably throw another layer. Let's let's kind of wrap. Let's let's play with this. Play with this hand, because I already kind of have this heart down. We'll call this heart. Take a look at the fire. And then you start to get an idea of sort of how something like this is made, okay? So um, I'm gonna start kind of from scratch. We already made the heart, that's fantastic. Let's bring in that heart. There it is, we can just kind of scale that up like so and uh, play with this some more, right? One thing that needs to change is the color, right? So we could do that. Um, what, what's Josh, great question. What size or resolution do you work in while you're making stuff like this? I typically will go with, if it's a photo, I just go with the original resolution of the photo, right? But what I typically do, it depends on like your kind of, your final output, because it's a fine line. Sometimes you'll get like an error that says, hey, you know what? This path is too long or we're trying to generate too, like uh, render uh, too large of a tree or something like that. What I typically do, let's go to file new, and uh, I will show you my saved blank document presets. I usually post to Instagram at the largest size because we're gonna get the most eyeballs if we keep it longer. So I do portrait 1080 by 1350, but you, like you said, I never work at this size. It's too small, right? I want more flexibility. So I multiplied it by two. So I do 2160 by 2700. Okay, so 2160 by 2700 is where I'll typically work and that's what this is currently set at, okay? Cool, we got that. We could play with this some more. Um, I actually probably would just have some fun with just kind of creating, even jumping in here and using the curvature pen tool. I could just click, click, click and make a swooshy element like that. Okay, so this is just gonna be a swooshy like that. There it is, filter, let's add flame. See what type of flame we get in there? Mm, not interesting, but check this out. You ready? We got that swooshy. We're gonna do a different type of effect. We'll go into render, we'll go into flame. Wait for it. And we're just gonna do one flame. So we're gonna take one flame along this path instead of multiples, right? When I do that, you're gonna get, again, something that does look pretty swooshy and kind of cool right? Stretch out that one flame along a shorter path in this case. Click OK, and there's my little swooshy. And from there, I can change this a little bit more, right? Maybe I don't want that one just like that. Maybe I want to actually change it, move this to the other side. Again, just kind of creating some cool uh, elements in here. So there's my new swooshy. Let's render this out, the flame again. Let's increase the width and click OK. We're getting something more and ooh, actually, you know what? I just added that to the same layer. I'm gonna do the same thing on a new layer, filter flame, bam, there it is. On that new layer, let's move that over uh, like so. Cool. We're just having, so oh, Anna, thank you so much. I'm glad you guys like this. This is just the beginning, by the way. Like this all needs to be tinted. I'm gonna take all these hints from, uh, from my hand, right? So uh, honestly, we need to add an adjustment layer. I'm gonna add hue and saturation adjustment layer. Uh, on that new layer, let's actually, I could do a number of things. I can clip it to this swooshy that I just made and I can shift the color, right? We can shift it into that pink if I want to, right? So that's too drastic right now, but we can take that and paint with black, B for brush, right click. Let's change it to just like a soft brush like so, and then just get rid of some of that and now just have it kind of transition from that uh, sort of pink into the yellow, right? So that's how I'd work for this. Let's duplicate the hue and saturation layer. Maybe we'll do it on this whole heart layer as well. So we'll turn off these others, right? That's what we get initially. Flip those colors. If you hit X, just like in Illustrator, you will s swap the foreground and background color. Uh, in this case, I actually want to, let's just fill everything. Let's actually invert this. Selecting that layer mask, inverting it, and I'm gonna paint with white now. So there we can have that, like that, just making it look a little bit more interesting and dynamic, like so. Let me know if you have questions. Uh... 
<laughs> hey, Ashi, what are you doing outside? Get back inside! I see, but like, what are you doing outside? You're not allowed. You can't be go just going outside. Just kidding. Ah, <laughs> uh, just joking. I'm gonna go shovel later, as I mentioned. Right in here. Take that. Probably play with this a little bit more. Right. We get it. Let's. We could wrap this around the arm as well. I happen to already have. Let's see. I got some pads. Here's a cool path. Right. Let's use this one. Shall we? We shall. We'll go to flame. Check this out. You ready? Render flame. Okay, so this is what I was mentioning um, about the size. So this path technically is longer than 3,000 pixels. So the preview will only show the first 3,000 pixels. It's still going to render out uh, the, the flame, but it's only going to give you this first preview. So again, multiple flames along a path. We're only going to get the first segment. It actually does look like we get quite a bit. Um, change the width, increase the length, there we go, perfect. Spacing out the interval of that flame is what's happening here, right? So something like that. Stretch it out. Check this out. Here's another thing we can do. We're dealing with this flame, which happens to be kind of more on this side of, of my hand. So I can go in and say, you know what? Let's use a custom color right in here. Custom color for the flames. We're gonna change that color to just a nice blue or purple, right? So change that color like so. Hopefully that'll be good. Wait for it. Oh, you get, oh, Carol, you gave your banana plants a drink. Oh, that's so awesome. It's still snowing here in Colorado, and I'm, I'm bummed because I want to start like a little herb garden. Because <laughs> I, I don't know why. Is that weird? For cocktails. And that's kind of the inspiration of my uh, next design that I'm going to work on. All right, so that's that's not bad. We made it blue. It works for us. We'll click OK. Uh, there we have it. Nice blue flame. Again, I don't like how it is um, essentially... Um, it's It doesn't have any dimension to it, and I need to even bend this. So we've bend, bent this using uh, warp, but we can go in and edit. And in this case, what I want to do... For those who know me, know that I love Puppet Warp. Right in here, bam. Puppet Warp. Now I can add some pins in here and uh, play with this as well. So I can move this, make sure it lines up accordingly with the end of that flame. Take this part out like so. This should actually go behind my wrist. And uh, I'm just kind of bending this. Now, if I change this, this is the Puppet Warp tool. I wanna change the mode to Distort. So right now it's just dealing with it just along a flat plane. But now I, when I pull it out, it's gonna come forward like it's coming in your face. So watch this, so as I select distort, you could see how it changes it. Again, bring it closer, it's gonna bend it in, right? Like that. Uh, this just makes it look a like just more dynamic to be honest with you, right? See what it's doing there? Zoop, 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 zoop. Kinda get the idea. It's, it's magic. What is happening here? I don't know. I don't know, guys. There it is. Distorting it, having some fun today. How's everybody doing today? You having a beautiful day? Uh, this is Photoshop Masterclass, just so you know. Um, yeah, like dra Chinese dragon. Yeah, ooh, what a great idea. Tunk, like, take a dragon. That would be a good, that would be another cool masterclass is like make something look like it's like built out of flames. You know, going beyond like a heart, but actually making it look like a dragon is on the inside. So that'd be awesome. I wanna know everybody like what is, what extra hobby has anyone picked up within the past uh, couple weeks? And honestly, let me know if this is like your new hobby. I certainly hope so, right? Shift this color a little bit. Would love to hear if like we're your new hobby. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, uh, 
All right, same thing for here. This is what I would do, just jump in, hue and saturation, clip it to that layer and adjust right into this red. And it really, it should be that purple color, but let's take a look at this. B for brush, paint accordingly, hit X to flip the foreground and background colors and start painting like, yeah, right over here. This needs to be blue on this side, right? And then it's gonna be more orange on the other side, which I can fix that in a second. Let's flip it back, bring that color back like so. Put the hand on top, so we have this arm. Let's drag it up to the top, wait for it. Right in here. This is something where I'd use just the quick selection tool for this, right? Or I could try remove background. So there, remove background. This is what I did. Actually made, let's turn off everything put his arm on one background. So now what I can do is I can go in, hit B for brush. You guys know how this works. I really just need these fingers to be honest with you. Boom, boom. Oops. Changed my mind. We're gonna just use this. Check this out. We'll start painting. I have that arm in the background and this is just gonna be the hand in the foreground. So now I'm eliminating, oops, a lot of this. X to flip the colors like that. B for brush, right click, softy. I have two brushes that I use constantly. Softy and hardy, <laughs> those are the two ridiculous names. It's just ridiculous. Crank up the flow. There we go. Something like that. That works. Cool. You get the idea. Jump that layer, clip it. Shift it some more. B for brush. Yeah. There we go, something like that. You get the idea, cool? All right. Uh, yeah, Josh, so I took this arm photo, yeah, just like last night. I was holding the camera, and then actually what I used because I'm like, just a regular photo didn't do it. I actually ended up grabbing one of these. Uh, I will show you, this is a bowling LED light. So turn this puppy on. You obviously are gonna get that sort of look. So that's what I did with the hand. I put blue on one side and then I put red on the other. Let me switch to, there we go. You know, let's dial in the right color. Right, you could see it actually changing to, come on. Oh, that was the saturation, I'm sorry. There we go, here we go. There we go, this is the light. So yeah, put that on there like so. I can make myself disappear as it blow, blows through the green, watch. It'll, it'll do green and then I'll start to disappear. It should, there's green as I disappear. All right, enough playing with this light, but it actually is pretty cool. So um, that's what I did here for the photo. Made it pitch black, use this light. Let's change this back to the, to the blue so I actually look like I'm in the scene. Yeah, that's silly. Why not? There we go. There's the brightness I'm looking for. See that? There we go. Let's change that to blue, switch back. All right, so yeah, there we go. Cool, now I got some cool lighting. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, it's a bowling, B-O-L-I-N-G. That's the name of the light, B-O-L-I-N-G. Uh, 
Now you need to singe some of the arm hair. <laughs> I don't know. The arm hair is kind of ridiculous, but it's fine. Like it's totally fine, right? Everything's like, everything's kind of working out about this with this. Um, I would still need to add some pop to the, this flame down here, right? And actually I'd probably want to continue it because there's more flames I actually have. So let's switch this over, boom. Let's go to this path. I think I have another one. This one right here. So that backside, you know, wrapping down underneath. So let's go to render flame. We have this set up. I have the second choice in here, right? Multiple flames along the path. We will shift this a little bit more to the blue like that. With that said, click OK. That's ready to go. <laughs> yeah, Tunk, I started to disappear when I started to turn it on green because I have a, the green screen uh, behind me. So uh, again, just like another flame there, take that arm, right? Duplicating that layer, Command J, right? So that's what I get. I get this arm, bup, there it is. Uh, with that arm selected, I can go to the properties panel and just remove that background. See that right there? Shoop, remove background. If you're on a pixel layer, removing it, right? Now you can see my arms in front. Yeah, let's go ahead and clean up those arm hairs. As I hit B for brush, let's change this to a hard brush. And I'm just gonna do this fast and loose, just like that, because it's gonna be hidden anyway, right? Bringing that down, because the only part it's gonna cover up is this flame right here, right? So I just wanted it to be behind that flame. Cool, you guys got the idea. Puppet warp, bam, bam. Change this to distort, pull this out, pinch this one in, maybe add a couple more pins, why not? Like that, and we're playing with fire. Okay, cool. All right, let's kind of move on. I actually want to get into my other design as well, if you don't mind, because again, just like creative uses of some of these uh, rendering tools that we have in Photoshop. Wait for it. X, paint in a little bit. There we go, cool, done, done. All right, so uh, last thing I do. So here's another thing that I wanna point out. It's a bowling uh, P1, yes it is. Bowling P1. You got it, Michelle. All right, so let's move on. We kind of have this squared away. A lot of people think actually, you, you know, just to kind of cover our bases, there are brushes out there that are flame brushes. I've downloaded a bunch of them. I don't think most of them are like that realistic. Right, so let's just go back out here. Let's take a new layer and just take a look at some of the brushes that you can get out there. So uh, just a number of them. If you wanna try some fire brushes, yeah, go ahead, search online and see what you come up with. Um, and uh, again, this is just my personal preference. I'll select one of these, uh, change it to white, make sure the flow's up 100%. And this is what a brush will look like. It's gonna give it, it's all gonna be like one solid color. Boom, there it is. Right, I think this tends to look more like smoke than anything, right? Even if I try to tint it, what I can do is I can try to uh, add a stroke. Let me turn this down a little bit. It's so bright. There we go, let's make some soft lighting. Right, so right in here, adding, not a stroke, I'm sorry, an outer glow or inner glow. So here's an outer glow. I was actually playing with this a lot, but there, you can actually add an outer glow. What I did here, added this outer glow, okay? set to screen okay let's actually see if that makes any difference because it's already on white so set it to screen and then what you can do is you can add a, um, a gradient as opposed to just a solid color so here's a solid color change that to gradient go in there find a cool gradient that's gonna be a yellow to a red and see how that looks uh, just like a lot better i think it looks pretty good right i could try the same thing with color overlay as well right so again this looks actually pretty good it, it it looks it looks a little fakey to be honest with you and honestly 
We could even, we could play with some of this. Yeah, no. Um, your best bet is, I know this session's all about sort of creating natural and abstract elements like without using any photo, but that's only if you can't, you can't get a hold of a, a photo of flames because it's always best to use real photos, like period. That's the one thing I learned coming out of school was, uh, you know, just to use real photos. Even if other tools can make it, try to use something real. Okay, so there that is. Here's the hand, I can put that on top. I can actually eliminate some of these parts that are kind of getting in the way. There it is. This brush is absolutely huge. Let's take it down inside, size. Okay, what am I doing? Oh, caps lock, I hate it when caps lock's on. If you don't see your brush, you probably have caps lock on. Clean it up. Look at how exact I am. No, I'm not that exact at all right now, but that's okay. It's quick and dirty. I only have about uh, 15, 10, 15 more minutes right in here for this one. But I'd say this is already done, hands on fire, you get the idea, cool. Uh, uh, there we are. So again, this was actually a free brush that I got from Brush Easy, by the way, right? So here we have it, right? And this is probably the best I've done when it comes to the brushes. Okay, so there's that. Let's turn on our other layers, see where everything else is. Yeah, that works as well. I'd actually say that is not bad. Let's convert that to a smart object, maybe shrink it down. Oh, that changes it. Change that to screen, something like that. Okay, so uh, next thing I would actually do is actually add some sparkles as well, or some like sparks. That's what this needs as well. I actually have used, um, I've tried brushes as well. So we have brushes for that to add some of those sparks. Uh, I actually think I used sparkles. We take a look in here. Taking this down in size. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Get it down in size. Um, wait for it. Come on, buddy. There we are. Just needs some of those sparks, right? Obviously, this doesn't this doesn't actually work too well. I would take that same approach that I did earlier. In fact, what I can do is I can grab that same one right in here. Actually, I'll just do. Uh, there we go. There's an outer glow adding that same effect with the, some sparkles or sparks or whatever you want to call them. Let's shrink them down, right? Do something like that. I'm just playing with flames. Fire, bad. <laughs> uh, hi, Paul. Great tool to warp the build uh, to build. I don't know what you're saying, Gina Fonso. Uh, Uh, all right, cool. Fantastic. I would say this is pretty much done. Here's one we just made. Here's, uh, here's another one that I made earlier. I also just like posted this to Instagram. I think there is some, some weirdness going on here. Uh, let's turn off some of that stuff. Yeah. Let's turn it off. Yeah. So here's like, here's the final, just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, let's move on. Cause I actually kind of want to deal with the trees. All right. I love unfrozen caveman lawyer, uh, uh, Will Ferrell. Yeah, that's Will Ferrell. All right, so use sparkles. I found brushes on brush easies, typically where I would get it. Uh, and again, here's our rock cover. Let's move on to something else, sort of taking that same idea. Let's turn off a lot of these, you know, 
doing the same situation, like taking a hand in this case, and let's clean this up. Let's just have some fun, huh? I only have like 16, I have t less than 10 minutes. So I'm gonna hurry up and do this and we'll see what happens. Um, you ready for this? Bear with me. This is where I'm just going to work. You'll see what I'm doing here in a second. Let's see, do I want that to climb up or do I want to reverse it? Okay, straighten that out. Wait for it, folks. Wait for it. Duplicating these two. Trying to figure out which direction I want to head with this. I have this arm and I can wrap, I could do the same thing as I can wrap branches around. Oh, it was Phil Hartman, I'm sorry. Wow, it's that, it's that, lo so that's that long ago. Phil Hartman, wow. Okay, so. I'm just thinking through the two different things I could do with this. I could have fingers. This is what I could do. I could take these fingers, right? So we're going to have a green hand. Let's flip this around. And out of the fingers, we can have, uh, we can kind of turn the fingers into trees, right? So what? that's one scenario that will work. And for the bottom part, we can actually have sort of like the, the base kind of turn into like roots if I want to. Um, yeah, it was a great character, Steve. Love him. That was pretty good. <laughs> it's just so random. Another thing I can do is uh, use this hand. And uh, make it look like it's grabbing trees as well. So let's go ahead and grab some trees. All right, this is gonna get interesting. I'm not sure if I played with the lighting. Now that I have this lighting set up, it's like I, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work in here. I added a new layer. Going back, resetting my brush. Probably painting with this color. A little brighter. A little larger. There we go, little overlay, right? So again, just being, getting real quick and dirty in here, painting with that color on this side of the trees, overlay, that's set to overlay, we can start to pick up some of those highlights just like that, right? So we have that splash of color coming in on that side. That's looking pretty good. Uh, other side, let's make a new layer, let's clip it. We'll switch that color to this blue, brilliant blue. B for brush, come in here start painting on this side. And again, it could be pretty strong initially because I know I'm gonna change it to something like overlay. Um, uh, I'd probably add a couple of them because linear dodge really punches it up a lot. But again, let's just go right there. Change that to the blue. Painting like so. Uh, okay, next up, taking a brush as well. I have uh, foliage brushes. I have a a bunch of leaves and different types of brushes that I can use in here on top of what I'm already working with. So let's change that over to that blue again. And kind of just clicking oh, right in here, right? I can start to add some of my own highlights like I'm doing right now. Cool. Soft light would be good, yeah. Let's say what I have that changed to. I have that overlay, let's change that soft light, yeah. What's funny about that is I use overlay and I use soft light a lot. 
Sometimes I'll get into some of these, but it just it just depends because these are all going to make it lighter. These are all going to make it darker. I know I need to lighten up the section, uh, so it's going to be either lighten or it's going to fall within these categories. Yeah, let's go to soft light. I really am digging it. Right again, just adding my own as well, like so. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Down here on this end, again another opportunity to like kind of t uh, render out a tree, flip it upside down, do all that fun stuff. Yeah, Brush Easy is the name of the site that will do that. So let's go in here, new layer, filter, render, a tree. I really want to wrap a tree around my arm again. Is that weird? It might be a little weird. There we go. Let's increase the thickness of this. Click OK. Quick and dirty. There it is. Flip it upside down. Uh, convert it to a smart object. How's everybody doing? Talk to me. Up next, we should have uh, Jason Levine doing a little video and audio masterclass. Fantastic. Right, so right over there, that's what we have on this side. We need to make this a lot darker. Uh, I could try going into levels, cranking that down, right? Now we get sort of that end. And of course, we would want to distort this like we've been doing. In this case, I'll warp it because I want to add some points, holding the option key down, just kind of putting some in place like that, maybe bringing these up, but it definitely needs to be just like a little bit more organic as I start to bend this around a little bit. Cool, something kind of like that. Hit enter, it'll apply that, um, there we go. It'll apply that any effect that is already applied to it. Uh, Cool. All right. How's everybody doing? Ask me some questions. I'm here for you. Uh, no one nearby made you a coffee. Dang. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I'm missing coffee, guys. I. You know what's. You know what's going through the roof? Gyms. Gym. Home gyms. And homemade coffee. Like uh, homemade coffee. So basically, coffee makers and uh, uh, home gyms are like huge right now. I think. Uh, and liquor stores. Hey, I want to give a warm welcome to Dunk. Just discovered these. Um, we've been doing this for, I've probably been doing this forever. Like literally forever, I feel. But, um, you know, probably at least five years. I think Kathleen said the other day she's done it for five years. So yeah, kind of around that time. I don't know. We used to do it on Twitch, but now we are 40 hours a week starting next week, by the way. Uh, so that's awesome. This time I'm going to add the light. It's going to go the other direction. I'm going to change the branch height. Maybe the thickness. There we go. Give me some different branches, tree. Come on now. Lighting direction on the other side. Click OK. Done. We have those roots. I have so much work to do. Uh, I'm glad you guys all promised to join me on uh, Instagram because that's where I'm gonna post this final version that I'm not gonna quite get done uh, today, right? So again, just adding another one in like that. I have this same effect right over here. See, levels, holding down the option key. Remember, this is my root, root one, root two, square root, dragging up option key, dropping it on, that one and it will add it okay so just by dragging or holding the option key or alt key uh, it will apply it accordingly and we can get all this squared away all right this is looking pretty good let's get rid of these branches or those roots, and then we have the start of something cool. So much more I need to add. I have more trees that I need to get to, and I was trying out different types as well. So there's some other ones back there. There's this tree. I'll probably thicken it up. It's gonna be that same process of painting, right, on that tree. So I would actually even, you know, just because I'm lazy, let's take all these and let's duplicate them and apply them to that tree in that background. Like so. So there it is. 
new tree added kind of back there actually has a whole lot of highlight to it i'll probably play with that some more right because this is getting that highlight there let's move that over you get the idea cool some some cool uh i don't know i want to have some like i want to have the tree just kind of like wrapping around my hand is the goal uh again taking those paths Boom, 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 like that. There we go, we'll just keep it. So here's something to keep in mind too, as I create this new layer up at the top, why not? And that's it for me. Ah, 